Got a review today of the LG G5, which was just released by LG and is actually making its way to every US uh, carrier on the market currently. The LG G5, which is LG's latest flagship device um, and is an interesting device to say the least. And listen guys, um, I'm going to be brutally honest with this review. Um, and and uh, you, you'll, you'll see what I mean when I get into it. But thank you guys for watching Technability, your source for no-nonsense tech. If you already haven't, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Okay, my name is Barrett. Let's go ahead and get started here. So the LG G5 is LG's latest flagship. Uh, you can see if I go around the device, it's a fairly attractive device. Uh, unibody build. Got the gold model here. They also have silver, pink, um, and I believe that other funky gold color. You can see the rear of the device. You have the power button, which is also the fingerprint scanner as well as the camera, uh, the flash, the charger, which is the uh, new USB, the dual-sided USB charger, you the front-facing camera, the 3.5mm uh, headphone jack IR blaster, volume rockers on the side now, so if you're used to the G4, G3 with the volume rockers on the back, no more, they're on the side now. Um, and basically all the other bells and whistles in terms of its physical hardware, such as the 5.3 inch display, 2K resolution, so it's got high resolution display, um, you know, 16 megapixel rear camera, and basically the SIM card tray with an SD card slot on the side. Okay, also the cool thing about this phone, which we'll get into in the end because I don't want to take the battery out right now, is the fact that the battery does pop off from the bottom, uh, which allows you to put extended hardware such as uh, camera improvements, battery extended batteries, etc. And, you know, it's also there for the future. So I will, um, I'm not going to be getting too deep into this review because I'm not going to be doing too long of a review because there's not much I really want to say here in relation to the G5. I am disappointed. The moment I took this out of the box, I was disappointed. Um, I'm just not really crazy about the design. It feels cheap. It's very lightweight, which I'll give them that, but it feels cheap. It's it's there's it's a metal build, but they did a teardown of it and found that there is more plastic in the device that LG will even admit to. So it, although it looks really elegant and you know has the metal bezels and whatnot, uh, it's not as elegant as I thought it would be in terms of its design. Also, the screen is washed out. I mean, it's supposed to have 900 plus nits, which means it's supposed to be a brighter screen, good indirect sunlight. But um, you know, I just I'm not crazy about the screen. It has this funky curve on the top. Okay, see that. And the speakers are on the bottom. Um, and the screen quality is not the worst that I've seen, but quite frankly, it, I'm just not crazy about the screen quality. It's, it's dull. Uh, it's washed out. It's not that bright uh, for whatever reason. I'm at 75% now. And honestly, just looking at it outside the camera, it looks a lot less than 75%. Um, just, I don't know. There's something about the screen that I'm not crazy about. 2K resolution or not, 5.3 inches. Decent size. Again, it's a good size. Not as big as, say, 5.5 or the 5.7 with the Note and the S7, but it's a good size screen for all intents and purposes. But again, I'm not crazy about the screen quality. I'm not really crazy about the design. It's not the thinnest phone, but it's not the thickest phone. Again, it's elegant in the sense that it's a nice, I guess the concept is nice, but it's just something about it looks plain and boring to me. I just feel like LG could have done so much more with this design. Um, and they didn't. You know, the front, I like that it doesn't have the branding, T-Mobile branding, it just says LG on the front, doesn't have the carrier branding. But I don't know. I mean, did they really need this much room up top here? I mean, you have a little bit of space between the speaker mesh or the speaker grill, uh, excuse me, the ear speaker mesh, and the bottom right here. That could have been completely removed. I mean, you could have just had. But but again, it's nitpicking, I suppose, right? Um, now, in terms of the, the, the hardware in itself, 4 gigs of RAM, you know, the um, you have a pretty decent battery. Uh, I've had the phone for about a day and a half now, and the battery life hasn't been the greatest, but it hasn't been the worst either. It's been pretty solid, half-half, not as good as, say, the S7 or the S7 Edge, but it's been pretty solid. Um, you know, just, again, in terms of thickness, it's not the thinnest device, it's not the thickest device, but it's, uh, you know, pretty good in, in one hand. It, it feels good in one hand, I will give it that. Okay, now, in terms of the software, this is where the LG G5 really just blew my mind in terms of absolute, just, I you know, like, I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, they completely went away from what Android is. Uh, they got rid of the App Drawer, which I am baffled by that. Why, LG? Why would you get rid of the App Drawer? What indication were you given that you felt the need to get rid of the App Drawer of all things? 
Uh, that's the first thing that Android users are accustomed to using on an Android phone. This is not the iPhone, LG. We like our app drawer. And the fact that you guys took it away just goes to show that you guys are definitely not loyal to Android as a pure operating system. In the sense that, yes, it's not stock Android. I know they got their LG UI on it and whatnot, but give me a break. Give me a break. We, the, the, it's, the app drawer has been around since 1.0. And you decide with 6.0 to take it away. Why? It, you know, it just makes it more complicated in the sense that some people don't like to have apps automatically added onto their home screen, right? And if you want to remove apps from the home screen, you can't just take an app now and remove it. You see, it'll, it'll make you uninstall it, unfortunately. So you have to long press, you have to go to home screen settings, and you have to go to hide apps. Three steps. And then when you go to hide apps, you can hide whatever you want and it'll hide it. Three steps to hide apps. Why couldn't we just use the app drawer, LG? What was the problem with the app drawer? Oh. All right, you guys can see it's LG's UI. Nothing new, nothing really revolutionary. Um, theme options, home screen options, lock screen options, font, font size, etc. Uh, always on display, you have to double tap to lock. Of course, again, you have the fingerprint scanner on the back, so you can unlock the screen with the fingerprint scanner. You can see the lock screen right there. Um, in terms of customizations, it's good. You have a ton of different customization options, theme options. Uh, again, you have the smart settings right there. You can see how smart settings work. Smart settings, you can have things turn on and off or change according to when, when you are or what you do. Try using smart settings. Okay, so you can see how smart settings works. Of course, memory, smart cleaning. Okay, basically a task manager. Again, going back to the display options, sound and notification. Again, network options, NFC, all that good stuff. Um, you can see the home screens. Again, in terms of customizations, you can go to home screen settings. You can add widgets, remove widgets. You can change the sc uh, screen swipe effect, the grid size, etc. So the software is pretty self-explanatory and minimal. But again, uh, there's no app drawer. So when you download an app, it automatically gets included onto the home screen. It'll create new home screens for you if there's no room on that specific home screen. Of course, you can create folders and whatnot. So if you want to minimize the clutter, you can create a folder. Uh, just looking at some of the uh, apps here, you can, see you can see the calculator, very minimal. You can see the clock, contacts, how contacts looks. Okay, it adds all those email contacts, which I hate. All right, you can see the dialer. Okay, web browser. It's a fast phone, no doubt about that. I mean, obviously, with uh, the hardware that these phones have now, it's almost like overkill. You can see how fast I'm opening and closing out of apps. All right. You could just clear all here. Back button, the, the, the home button as well as the multitasking. Loudspeaker. Baked into the screen. Of course, you have the speakers, front-facing camera, you have the rear camera on this thing, which a lot of people have been having issues with the rear camera glass cracking, so that's something that you should look out for. Now, I don't suggest putting either of these screens on their back. I know that sounds weird, or either of these phones on their back. I, mean, I can just go in around. I just want to go around the hardware of the device so you guys can see. There's a sticker on the bottom, by the way. Speaker, you can see the rear. See the volume rocker. Side, the top, back. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the camera here. Uh, one place where this phone does somewhat shine is the camera. Okay, you can see it takes fast pictures. Of course, you have burst shot features. Uh, if you go to mode here, you can see you have pop-out, multi-view, snap, panorama, time-lapse, slow-mo. All right, you have the settings option, flash, of course, simple, manual. So if I go to manual here, because I'm in simple mode, uh, it basically gives you like a pro mode of the camera, which a lot of these Android phones are doing now. Samsung has a similar similar type feature. Again, going to settings, you can see the variety of different settings. You can change the camera quality. Um, so definitely the camera is definitely solid quality. Uh, the bright is super, uh, the flash is super bright. Uh, and, and then again, if you just go to video quality, a 4K video. Okay, so I'm recording video right now. I can take pictures as I'm recording the video. So video quality is pretty good. And I'll show you guys sample video in a moment. Uh, you can see the front-facing camera here. A solid front-facing camera with beauty mode. You could record the front-facing as well. Hey guys. Hey. So. Alright, front-facing camera. 
Um, you know, a ton of different camera features, no doubt about that multi-view pop-out, which is really cool. You can see how that looks, multi-view, which is actually really awesome. Awesome feature, in my opinion. Uh, snap. All right, you can assemble short video clips, 60-second videos. Pop-out, of course, which... Uh, you can see pop-out here. Basically pops out that area of the photo. Alright, pop out. Alright, so the camera has a lens, you can see the different lens eye, lens flare, black and white, fish eye, vignette. Alright, so change that up as well. Simple, which is basically just take a picture, get it over with. Alright, so there's the camera, we're gonna go ahead and show you guys a sample 1080p video. So we'll be right back. Set it up or anything. Right. Like if I had Sample a, video. a Windows PC and an LG phone, I'd have to do all kinds of crap. Yeah, no, Mac to iPhone is easy because you have iTunes and all that jazz. But yeah, you also have iCloud and you have uh, iMessenger. Yes, they do, the iWorld. All right, you guys can see the GF. Absolutely. All right, here's sample uh, video with the LG G5. All right, we're just going to do a quick 40 second video indoors. You guys can hear the audio too of the video. All right, there you guys go. See so how the gallery looks, simple. You could edit a photo, of course, by just clicking here, going to more. You, can, you have different uh, options here, raw, crop, rotate, etc. You can edit it by just clicking the edit option. You can edit with photos. And you get the variety of different editing options. You can add uh, filters, etc., etc. So you guys know how that works. Very similar with any Android phone. Um, now, in relation to the messaging app and the keyboard, let's go ahead and take a look at their LG keyboard. And it works well. Hey, this is the LG keyboard, and it works well. Period. Thank you for watching. Technability, guys. I don't think it's going to spell tech. Oh, it spelled technability correctly. All right, there you guys go in terms of voice to text. So it's a solid keyboard. It also has swipe. Um, no complaints with the keyboard. LG has a good keyboard. Even though I still use the Google keyboard, LG has a good keyboard. What is 3 times 3 minus 2 times 5? The answer is minus 1. How old is Brad Pitt? Old. All right, you guys can see the bottom buttons below. You have a Google Tap and all that. You have the multitasking, back button, of course. You could change these buttons. System settings, lock screen settings, home screen settings. So, all right, you could change these buttons down below and adjust them to your liking. Um, and you have all of LG's tools as well. Tasks, or excuse me, not LG tools. You have LG apps, L LG Health, Smart World, Quick Remote. So you have you know different apps that it comes with, which I call bloatware. Of course, that's what it is, including the T-Mobile bloatware. Um, except for visual voicemail, which I like to use. But that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover here with the LG G5, guys. Um, I am disappointed with this phone. I thought they could have released something a little bit more complete. It feels like a beta phone. It feels cheap. Uh, it, it's not, to me, the software is just not there. It's not there, guys. 6.0 or not, this is not complete. They took, they got rid of the app drawer. I don't know why that is. Again, the build quality, not crazy. But, oh yeah, let me guys show you the bottom here. You see how this comes out? This is a cool feature, I guess, where it's like you can add uh, extended battery, camera improvements, etc., etc. So, there you go. This comes out. That's pretty much that. Um, not a phone that I am really crazy about. Uh, it's probably going to go down in price extremely if you wait. I'm sure this phone will be about $300 in the next month or two. In the aftermarket, that is, used. Uh, LGs tend to lose their value. And I, I just don't see this phone staying at... I don't, I don't see it as a phone worth financing for $629 or whatever it is. It's just not worth it. You're going to be stuck in a finance for a phone that, in my opinion, is not complete. LG, you could have done a lot better with this device. Uh, and I implore you guys to look at other phones. Samsung, HTC is coming out with the M10. Heck, even the iPhone. Um, so... There you guys go. That's my opinion of the LG G5. Thank you guys for watching Technability, your source for no-nonsense tech. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Have a good one.